how does multicultural competency become a key factor of success as we look to reimagine wellness? And to me, in order to do that, there are kind of like two key steps that we need to take. The first one, Chuck, is broadening our understanding of what multiculturalism means. We need to start understanding multiculturalism, you know, looking at it further than just uh, uh, thinking on race and ethnicity as key variables. We also need to understand variables such as gender and age and disability and socioeconomic status and education and sexual orientation, religion and spirituality. There are and among many others that actually we cover in our certificate program that helps us create culture, shape culture, and that help us um, kind of shape how we see the world. So that's number one, right? Broadening our understanding of multiculturalism. And then to me, number two is broadening our understanding of what wellness means. And, you know, one goes by the hand of the other. We all have different views of, of the world and we all have a different understanding of what wellness means. And before we put in place any policies, any type of programming, communication, we need to start by understanding you know, what wellness means for minority groups. And sometimes, Chuck, that it's, that it's very hard for healthcare pr practitioners uh, to grasp this concept because we all have kind of like our own preconceived notion of what wellness means. And in order to, under to do that, we need to understand, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, those communities. We need to start by listening to them. We need to understand the nuances within their cultures. And we need to be able to have deliberative dialogue where we're listening to everyone's perspectives and we're taking them into consideration. And then in addition to that, if we are broadening our, our understanding of wellness, we need to have diverse and inclusive organizations with team members that actually translate data into actionable insights. And we need to be ready to hire other organizations or consultants or agencies with diverse team members who are multiculturally proficient. So you start by acknowledging and embracing that we live in a multicultural country. And then from there, you broaden your understanding of multiculturalism. And then that leads to broadening your understanding of wellness. And that is, as I mentioned, a step in the right direction to reimagining wellness. I don't think I could have said it any better, that's for sure. Thank you so much. So, you know, one of the things that we are most excited about here at the National Wellness Institute is our newly formed high-level wellness through multicultural competency training program. Tell me, why should people consider registering for high-level wellness through multicultural competency? For us, we really think that right now there are no other similar offerings in the market. We really think that, you know, we started, the, this is a project that we work together. We put so many hours towards this and we put all our different kind of like our expertise to, to, to make it as robust as it is right now. And it started as a certificate program. Then we partnered with HR.com and we expanded it to actually expand the reach of our initiative. And, you know, we're very happy that it has become lately very popular because right now it has become to kind of like a very dynamic and interactive type of certificate and it's online and it's self-paced so you can learn at your own leisure and in a very safe environment which is very important nowadays and the reason why we think it's so unique is because this program we based it on our multicultural wellness wheel which is our roadmap to becoming multiculturally competent. So as I mentioned before, this program really helps us to broaden our understanding of multiculturalism. Then you go to the next step and it helps you broaden your understanding of wellness and well-being for all healthcare practitioners and um, wellness professionals. Then it also covers a very crucial concepts in, in a very extensive way um, such as the difference between diversity and inclusiveness and equity versus equality and how you can apply these concepts to create culturally relevant initiatives. And then the next steps is that it really helps you 
um, understand how there are different interlocking systems that come into play in order to develop multiculturally relevant programs. And the way you do this, and we really train you on this, we give you the foundations to become proficient on this, is that we base it on the three main pillars of our multicultural wellness wheel, which are individual and family wellness, community wellness, as well as worksite wellness. How is multicultural competency a key success factor as we look to reimagine wellness? Well, um, it's a key success factor because, um, well, let's start first with the demographics of the U.S. The demographics of the United States is rapidly changing and we're becoming a far more diverse, more ethnic, ethnically diverse, more religiously diverse, um, diversity in terms of diversity and viewpoints. And in order to be able to serve those diverse populations, there needs to be a competency to be able to serve all. So multicultural, multicultural competency uh, for, wellness, for wellness professionals is really key when we think about the populations that we say we are going to serve. And that's exactly right. So thinking about that, what are some of the factors that as, as you've seen, you know, even starting back in 2015, kind of talk to about some of the factors that you have kind of been working on and developing and then, you know, ultimately uh, getting into a, a wonderful training and education program that we have called the High Level Wellness Through Multicultural Competency. I've gone through the training and it's really interactive. And, and so it's, it's very, very engaging. It has you think. And there is a real difference, like when I talk to people and I ask them whether or not they've received any kind of multicultural competency training, oftentimes what I hear is that we get diversity training. And this is not a diversity training course. Um, what this is, it really begin, it takes um, wellness professionals, practitioners, participants, um, HR professionals, it takes them through a journey. And this is a journey where you first start to look at, you know, why is multicultural competency important? And it makes, it talks about, you know, the social good, the business good, the, the compliance issues. And it also has you begin to really examine who you are and what your worldview is and what your beliefs is. So there's an opportunity for you to do those self-assessments and really understand how you think um, how, and, and why you think the way you think. Then it also allows you to be able to start to kind of broaden your perspective and look at what exactly is culture and really started to start to get people to start thinking beyond what you would normally think about when you think about culture. And when you go through this, when you go through this exercise and, and start to think, you know, there are all kinds of cultural groups and are we really serving those groups? So it's taking you through this journey. You're, you're saying, okay, I got a better understanding of what culture is. I'm getting a better understanding of who I am and what my culture is, and then start to be able to look at how do you, how do you engage with others? and to be able to recognize differences in others without judgment. Speaking of work that's paid off, the thousands of hours that you have put into our brand new program, High Level Wellness Through Multicultural Competency Training that we have partnered with HR.com on. Tell me, why should people consider registering for High Level Wellness Through Multicultural Competency? The timing was really good around the release of the Multicultural Competency Program because everything that's happening in the country, when we look at, when we look at COVID-19 um, and, and start to, and people hear about the, the disproportionate way that is impacting some communities and what that is doing, it's bringing to light information around health, health disparities. And so as wellness professionals, as those that are offering wellness programs, for the first time, people are really getting that you have populations that are not similarly situated when it comes to health and access to health. And as wellness professionals recognizing that, 
you know, I think it's, we now need to look at, okay, now that we recognize that there is an issue, how do we reach these populations? And so the timing, you know, the timing is really good to be able to, you know, to, to take a course like this when, when the country is really looking at there's populations that we need to serve. Perfect. Linda Howard, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Chuck.